Hey everybody. Welcome. I'm Michael Coe and I'm going to take you through a solo playthrough of Tiny Epic Tactics. Keep in mind, uh, this is a prototype, so we have some unfinished um, assets and I'm, I'm using Heroes of Lander and Seed card sleeves because I didn't have any mini Euro size card sleeves on hand. But um, this is the solo deck for determining uh, enemies that are going to be moving and whatnot. Um, so I've set it up already just to kind of get a head start and you'll set it up kind of, you know, exactly like you're seeing here. Um, and then my heroes, I set one unit on each of the four starting spaces. I've already done that. Uh, now I'm going to place the four enemy units, but I wanted you to see how that is done. So that is where I'll begin. Okay. So in this, um, when you're setting them up, you're going to need the control tokens uh, and we'll draw off the top of the solo deck and we see here beast so that's all we're looking at right now so we're going to be placing the beast character and we're going to shuffle these up drop one out okay so the beast is going to go on the red control space and then we'll put that one aside next up uh, the beast so in the case that you draw somebody that's already been placed you move to the leftmost unit that's not been placed. In this case, it's the warrior. So we'll shuffle this up. And the warrior will be starting on the blue control space here. Okay, uh, we got the fighter. So we got the fighter again. So then it'll go to the mage, the wizard. So we'll shake this up. Wow, I already know what it is. Um, the wizard is going to the yellow space here. Now, for the fourth one, which will be the rogue, we already know, so we don't need to draw. I will shuffle. Actually, we do, because the, the compass is going to help determine where they go, because they're going to go adjacent. So, you can see this compass here. It's north. So, the unit's going to go to the north space of whatever uh, one I drop here. I think red fell first. So, the rogue is going to go just north of the beast. So, there we go. So now we got our enemies set up. We can put these away for now. We may come back to those later, we probably will. Um, and then shuffle these back. Okay, so the end of the game for solo play will be triggered when either uh, I've reached seven kills on this kill tracker by killing seven of these enemy units, which right now you only see four, but they respawn as different characters. Um, or all of my units die, or I make it into the largest uh, dungeon here and clear that dungeon out and get to the crystal at the end of that dungeon, and then that crystal will trigger the end of the game. But in order for me to get to there, I have to have cleared... Uh, all the other, I have to have collected all the other crystals first. Um, and then that dungeon essentially opens up for me and I'm able to go in there. So I don't really want to worry about that one uh, right off the bat. Okay, with that said, um, I've got my characters chosen. That was just essentially draw two, pick one. And then these guys were randomly chosen from the bottom of the deck. And the solo version of the character is just on the reverse side. I've also got myself a tactic card because um, you will use these for the human player in the game. Uh, the enemy player does not. This one I got um, knock them out. This is if I knock a enemy out of the target area uh, with a melee attack, I get to immediately move any other enemy on the board one adjacent space. So I'll just leave that face up. As a nice reminder for myself. Um, and then I'm ready to begin. So these are the crystals. Um, this is the last crystal. And right now, the enemy controls all these crystals. So they're on their red side, and they're worth two points for the enemy. And then as soon as I capture it, I will take the crystal. I'll flip it over. It's worth one point for me, but that's a three-point spread. So it's pretty good. Okay, so um, I will take three actions as normal. Um, I have exhaust tokens here, so that all happens as normal. And then, and then we'll proceed from there. 
All right, so let's begin. I've got all my guys spread out, um, which isn't the best because I kind of picked some units that have abilities that help other units. So I kind of want to start closing in so that I can take advantage of some of this. Um, so I'm going to move my beast one, two, three, four, right next to Lorwyn, my wizard. And I'm going to leave her B for now. Because uh, I've got Sephiria as my beast, and he can pick her up later and have a, a pretty sweet move. Um, I'm a little bit worried about Nim up here all alone. Um, but I, th I think I'm just going to move her down to here. She can move four. So I'm going to move her all the way down to this forest. Nim likes the forest. She gets extra damage. But I'm not going to attack yet because I just want to make sure that I get all my units in decent positions. And I can still use all these portals like normal. In order to go into there, though, to access the dungeon, the whole top has to be cleared, like you're seeing here. Um, but I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay, so that's my turn, and then now we get to see an enemy turn. On the enemy's turn, they're only going to activate one of their units at a time, and that'll be determined by this card. So they're gonna activate their fighter. So I'll, I'll place this card over the fighter showing that the fighter has taken their turn um, because you have to get through all the enemies before they can go again. Um, but I also see here a special bonus for the enemy and it says plus two to their movement. And I ignore the rest of the card with the exception of the compass. So when I'm, unless I'm in the dungeon, this is only for the dungeon. Outside the dungeon, it's just up top here. Um, so she's gonna move, she has a five movement which means she can move actually seven with this plus two. But the order that you go through first is the enemy will look to see if they can make a physical attack, a melee attack. If they can't, they'll look to see if they can make a ranged attack. If they're still not able, a spell attack. And then, then they'll move. And then they'll check the attacks again. Um, but they don't get to attack twice. Once they've attacked, their turn is over. So in a lot of cases, they'll attack and then, and then that's it. But um, So let's see. She has a bow. She's got a two range on her bow. That's not going to be far enough to hit anybody. Um, and then she, she doesn't have, have, you know, she's got melee, but she doesn't have a spell. So she's going to proceed to her movement. Um, she's going to move seven. So what happens first is you, you break the movement down just into, into two uh, phases, essentially. Um, I look for the nearest unit, and I don't consider terrain or anything like that when looking. So the nearest unit is one, two, three, four, five, or six. So the nearest unit is definitely my wizard. So the first thing that the warrior will do is move north until they're directly lined up with that unit. In this case, they're already lined up. So they're not going to take the north movement, and now they'll move. So essentially they move like in the, in the uh, column, and then they move in the row. So now we're just gonna move in the row. So one, two, three, four, and then they'll check their attacks again. Now they can make a melee attack, so they will. Um, and in this case, that's three damage to Lorwyn. And then they will roll the knockback. This character has two. And Lorwyn gets knocked back one, which is really a shame because I wanted to be able to use Safiri's action there. Okay. Um, and then I could counterattack, in which I will. Um, so she'll cast her spell. All targets in range take zero plus one per roll. That's pretty brutal, um, but I'm still going to do it. So I'll spend one plus, I'll roll three dice. And cool, actually, it's not too bad. I got two, so Umog is going to take two damage. Okay, and then this card stays here to show that they've done their thing. Oh, at the end of my first turn, I would draw another one. This is the climb to higher ground. So if I move two units onto elevated terrain in a single turn, then I get um, to take an immediate free ranged attack, which is really nice. Okay, with that said, it's my turn. Um, and I'm going to... I wanted to use Safiri, but um, instead, I'm going to go into this portal, come over to here to this portal, so that's one, and I'm going to enter this dungeon since nobody's on top. And I'll pull that dungeon down here so we can see it. Um, so the entrance is here, so I'll be placed 
here in the dungeon. I moved one, two, and this unit has three movements, so I can still move one more. And my options, if I move here, I have to spend a mana, and, and I don't have mana. So I have to move up. I'm trying to get to that crystal, I can't move diagonal. So I'm going to move up onto the enemy, and that's a random enemy spawn. So I'll draw this card, and I got the uh, gelatinous cube. So I roll dice for the attack, um, and then keep rolling until you roll at least one knockback. For each failed roll, I take a damage. Okay. So my, yep, yeah, so this is my, so this is essentially how I'm attacking this beast, is rolling this until I get a knockback, and for each failed roll, I take a damage. So I got one, but I also failed on a roll, so I'm gonna take one damage. But then that beast is dead, but I've also used the max movement for that character now. And then this gets put aside. For my second, um, so that was a move and an attack. So Lelathar, uh, actually, so that, that, sorry, that does not count as an attack. That just is part of the movement. So that's, that actually does not exhaust Lelathar. Um, so I still have two more movements. So in that case, I think uh, Nim has a five range. One, two, three, four, five. So I am going to attack the beast from where she's at, because she gets that plus two, and he won't be able to counterattack her, which is really nice. So he's going to take three damage. So I'll just deal three damage to Lord Theodolf. And then for my third attack, uh, I will move in between here, or for my third move anyway, and I won't be able to attack, but I'm going to block... Um, Lorwyn from taking any more damage. Okay, so they're up, but I need to draw a tactic card for the end of my turn. All right, start a new um, sweet. So we adjusted this card a little bit, but uh, effectively it's the same thing. If I lose a unit, I can recruit a new unit of the same type. I'm definitely going to take this one over um, Climb to Higher Ground. I like that one better for sure. I'll discard this one. Okay, so for the enemy... We are looking at the rogue. Okay, so silver is going to move. Um, special. Wow. So the silver is going to do plus three damage. Um, so she'll. So silver will look first to attack, which five range. Um, this is definitely the closest unit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just out of range. So silver will move, and the compass says west, but silver is going to move toward the nearest unit which is Nim, uh, and, but the compass does show that silver will move across the row before the column. So we'll just move straight this way. Uh, one, two, three, four for the water, five. Then silver will check the attacks. It can definitely make the ranged attack, but not the melee attack, so it will. Uh, it does, uh, it's brutal. So two plus three, so five damage to Nim. That really hurts. And then Nim will counter for sure. I get the plus two damage, so I do three damage back to silver. Okay, uh, and then it's my turn. So um, I'm going to, I can move here right now and get that, oh, let me move this up so you can see a little better, and get that crystal. Um, and that's the crystal of plenty. It says all allies replenish to Full, oh, I'm not rolling. Uh, I messed up. I didn't roll Nim's um, ammo for her normal attack or her counterattack. So I'm going to catch up and roll that now. So the first one will be one ammo plus. Well, she only rolls two, though. She's quite efficient. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Two more. One, two. Then the counterattack, one. Okay, so that's accurate ammo now. But with the. Crystal of Plenty. All allies replenish their ammo and their mana to full. So that's fantastic. And then I now flip this over and I get to keep this one. Uh, I'll put this up here. And now I've taken control of that. And immediately upon doing that, I will exit the dungeon at the entrance, which is here. And then I can still finish my move. So that was one... So I will then move two, and I will exhaust Lelathar and make 
a melee attack on Ulrich, which does four damage to Ulrich. One, two, three, four. And Ulrich will make a counter attack, and the enemy doesn't have to spend mana. Um, so Mo Ulrich will make a full mana counter attack. Also, when I attack Ulrich, I become weakened, but I already have my weakened token, so that doesn't do anything. So Ulrich's going to do two damage plus whatever blue icon he rolls here, which is one. So he's going to do three damage to Lailathar, taking Lailathar down to six health. Okay, so now I have one more action in which I could fight. Let's see. So Umog, she continues taking actions on her turn until she's attacked twice. All, or performed all five solo action steps. So actually, um, dang, so I, I didn't read her ability thoroughly when she made that first attack on Lorwyn. And so it's only fair that she gets to just do another attack. But she did knock Lorwyn back on her first attack. So um, she'll make a ranged attack and do two damage because uh, the range is two that's close enough so i'm going to take lorwin down another two health that's the most honest way i want to make sure that um that everything's happening here properly so I, I i missed that step but i but we made up for it now we can move forward now i can decide what i want to do with my third action whether it's to attack umag again um with Safiri this time, I could do three damage, potentially knocking Umag back, or I could run away. And I like the idea of running away right now, because Lorwyn is really weak. I can't, I mean, three damage, I, I feel like that's kind of trivial right now. So I'm going to run away, um, and Safiri can carry Lorwyn away. So I'm going to go four, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to drop Lorwyn in this village, which will give her four health. So that's really nice. Um, okay. And then I will draw a tactic card, lay low, uh, move at least two of your allies into lower terrain, not using portals. Um, that may be better because then I get to do a free melee attack. I don't have two people on higher terrain, but I can, I can make that happen. I think that may be better than knock them out um, in this mode of play. So I'm going to take that one and discard, knock them out. Okay, so that's all of my stuff. Now we move on to the enemy. Beast. All right. Uh, uh, oof, we'll see. I, I think that was good, though, that I ran because the beast is going to target my beast, because that's the closest unit. Um, so during a melee attack, or no, the beast is up here, hasn't done anything yet. So the beast is, I'll have to count to see who's closest. But let's make sure we do his ability right. During a melee attack, all other player units within three take a damage. Okay. Um, and that's going to be plus two damage to a melee attack, which is really brutal. Um, really, really brutal. And it's going to move south. So it's going to move the column first. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, four, five. Nope. He's going for Nim. And Nim is going to die. One, two, three, four. So he moved the column until he was in the same row as the nearest unit. Then moved the row. Used his maximum movement. which Well, not max. He can move six. But moved uh, up to getting to the unit. Then he will check for the melee attack, which he can make. It's going to do six damage and just completely obliterate Nim. So Nim is down. Down for the count. And this goes to the enemy, actually, um, for points. So I'll leave that up there for later. And then... Uh, that was really bad. Um, and then it's my turn. Okay, so... I don't need a tactic card yet. Lailathar is exhausted. 
Hmm. And this person is dead, is captured. Okay. This is getting a little tricky, but I'm going to move Safiri one, two, three, four. No, I'm going to go into this dungeon with Safiri. Why not? So this will come to the side. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way so we can get a good shot of this. And I was here, so that's just one. Takes me into here. I can complete my movement. But let's take a look at what we're seeing in here. We have um, like a, uh, like a cave-in of rocks that I would have to roll knockbacks to get through. We have a trap. Uh, this one uh, could potentially deal um, some pretty heavy damage. We have a lock up here, which means it has to be a rogue. We have some uh, normal enemy encounters. That's a wizard one. And that's where we got to get to. So uh, I'm going to take... The, I've got a lot of health. I'm not too afraid of attacking these enemies. Let's see what is the shortest path. One, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the same. But here I could potentially lose movement. And time is a getting things done before I die out here is pretty important. Uh, I'm going to go one, two. So it's actually because moving here is one two, three, and I will draw an enemy. And it is the Spitting Crawler. Uh, you must pay two ammo, otherwise take a damage. So I'll take the damage, then this beast is, is addressed, and I still have one more movement, four. And so I will go here. And that's Safiri's turn. Okay, then with Lorwyn, I will go one, two, three, um, and Lelathar. I could, I, I can kill Ulrich, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to take two health to remove the weakened token, and then I'm going to attack with a melee attack, which will kill Ulrich. But I do get weakened again because that's Ulrich's one of Ulrich's special abilities. If I attack him, then I get weakened. So. Um, but that unit is gone, and I will keep this card now for points. Um, so actually, I'm going to just keep this up here next to my crystal, and that is that. So now I get to draw a tactic card. Uh, let's see. And it is find the hot spring. If I end an ally's movement in the water, I immediately restore to full health. Uh, could be pretty useful for Lelothar. Um, hmm. And I don't have anybody on elevations anymore. I don't want this lay low anymore because that's elevation stuff. So I don't know if I'll use it, but I think I'm more likely to use it than the lay low. Um, all right. So now it's their turn, but everybody has, uh, a, everybody's taken a turn at this point. So now I, I grab all of these cards and I shuffle them back into the deck and take their action. This could potentially spawn a new enemy unit. They're missing their wizard. So if I if I draw a wizard card right now, then they will spawn a new wizard. That could be really bad for Lelothar, considering it, it could potentially spawn right next to Lelothar. Okay, let's see what we get. A rogue. Okay, so silver gets to move. Uh, Silver's ability, if there's uh, multiple units within range, then Silver will attack to up to two units. Okay, and there wasn't in that case, so we're fine there. This one is plus three movement. There's nobody to attack right now. The nearest unit is going to be Lelothar, because the enemies don't use the portals. So we're going to move towards Lelothar, and we're going to start on the row so one two three four five six seven eight and that's the full movement it didn't quite get to Leothar's column but can i hit Leothar? i've got a five range one two three four five 
and they would get a plus one range anyway because they're higher in elevation. So yes. So Silver will take a shot at Lelothar. Silver's not in range to hit Lorwyn, so I don't have to worry about that. But Lelothar will take two damage. One, two. And Lelothar is not close enough for a counterattack. I feel like I should have picked slightly different heroes. Um, Cause I just don't feel like I'm using many of my heroes special abilities. So I feel like I'm leaving something on the table where I could be giving myself a better advantage and I just didn't pick wise enough at the start of the game. I, mean, I think I keep putting this a bit too low at a shot. Let me fix that. All right, um, so that's, that's that. That was theirs. Now I'm up and I did get a kill, so I'll move this forward. Notice if I don't get enough kills, I actually lose points. So I, I really want to get at least five kills so I don't lose points. So I can't just concentrate on the dungeons. Um, but it is my turn. So I will go one. I'll fight. Ah, I got that gelatinous cube again. So I have to roll until I get a knockback. And I'll take damage for any non-knockback rolls. So two damage. But then I, I've taken care of that beast. That was one, two, three, four. And I get the crystal of pain. Select any target enemy and deal three damage to them. That's pretty good. Um, I kind of want to do it to silver, but I'm not very close to silver. I'm going to deal three damage to Umog. Umog's really scary to me. And then I get this now. So that will be two less points for the enemy and one more point for me. This unit automatically uh, comes out of the dungeon at the portal entrance. This will just go back up on top as normal. And that was one move. So now um, I will, I could maybe get over there and attack Umag, but I, just, I don't think I can kill Umag. Um, I'm gonna take Lorwyn and go one, two, three into this cave. So kind of, I can attack a monster or I can, if I've got a rogue, I can go that route and not take damage, but this is, but I, I'm not a rogue. So I will go here and that was my third movement and that's all she can do. So she has to stop right there. And then for Lelathar, I cannot sacrifice the two health or it would kill Lelathar. So that's the end of my turn. Um, but I didn't use Lelathar, so the weakness goes away. I draw a new tactic card. You, uh, so if I do capture an enemy unit, then I can immediately take a free action. This one I'm keeping for sure. I will definitely use that one. And I will definitely, maybe, get around to using the start anew. But it does take time for me to get out. And it's not really um, helping me with my other objectives. So, But I, I think I need another unit to make sure that I don't lose this game. Um, so that's my turn. Now we're on to the enemy turn. The rogue. Now, so because the rogue's already taken an action and I drew a rogue card, it goes to the leftmost unit that's not taken an action. So Umog is going to take an action. If Umog makes a ranged attack, then Umog will do plus three damage. That's pretty brutal. Okay, so Umog's going to continue taking actions until she has attacked twice, either missile or melee. So Umog will first move because I because the melee the, the missile attacks only two range and my beast is three range away so umog will move gonna move by the row first but it's already lined up so now by column so one two three four and then umog is going to take a melee attack uh three damage one uh, one two three Ouch. And then potential knockback. That would do more damage to me, which it does. And then he'll t she'll take another attack because that's her special ability. And she knocks Safiri out of the game as well. That is bad news. I was really hoping to use Safiri actually to go back and and get uh, my, my unit there. Um, dang, that's really bad. Okay, so now it's my turn. And I am not looking good, man. Uh, this is this is scary. Um, Lailathar. I can't, can I get to him? Is the only way I can go one, two, three. That puts me right next to Umog, which is kind of scary, to tell you the truth. Um, even after I heal, that's really, really scary. One, two, three. Can't quite get there. 
um, one, two, three, can't quite get there, but it is, it is a little uh, closer, a little bit more secured too, except for, uh, except for that nasty range on silver. I'm gonna go one, two, three into this village. Because I'm down to two units, I'm not going to uh, exhaust, even if I take a second action, which is helpful right now. I need any sort of help I can get. Um, and I am within range to shoot at Umog, but I only do one damage. That's really bad, because then Umog is within range to counterattack um, for two damage. But, actually, because Umog's in the water, Umog will take two instead of one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the attack anyway. Um, so it'll cost me one ammo total. I didn't roll any ammo icons. That's nice. Umog will take two damage because she's in the water. She will counterattack me for sure. I'll take two damage. And then that's two actions. So Lorwyn is in the cave here. I can't go through the lock because I'm not a rogue, but I can go, I can attack the enemy. So one, two, Let's see what I encounter. A troll. You must have at least four attack, melee attack, otherwise take a damage, and I don't have four, so Lorwyn will take a damage, but uh, she has one more movement, so she'll move into here. This is the Crystal of Flight. Um, so you may select any unit and move up to seven spaces. Wow, that's really good. Um, okay, sweet. So she comes out anyway. That just happens automatically when you complete it. And now I can take a unit seven spaces. Huh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move Lorwyn. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, into here. And this one's just really nice and sweet. Um, so five, six, and I will complete this one. Crystal of healing, heal all allies to health. Yay, these things are gonna save my game. Um, and then I come out right here, and that was uh, one, two, three, four, five, Six to get inside, seven to get the crystal. Full movement there for, for her then. So I'm done um, with that turn of mine. So uh, let's see. Discovering magic. Move an, if, after you move an ally, uh, you have at least one ally in a water, a forest, and a peaks. This is a no-go. I don't even have three allies. Okay. Um, please don't be the wizard. It is indeed the wizard. So now... The enemy is going to respawn a wizard. So I'm going to grab the wizard deck, randomly draw a wizard for the enemy. Clotho. Okay, so Clotho is going to come into play and Clotho still gets to take this action, um, but I gotta determine where Clotho goes. So I'll grab those control tokens again. I'll shuffle them up, drop one out. It's red. That's actually not too bad, except for there's a lot of units up there, and that's the last dungeon that I'd have to try and get to, so I'm going to have to do something about those guys. Um, this one is all damage, is extra by one, and i got to turn this over for Clotho's solo enemy side, and it's just summon spirit target takes two damage, plus two her roll. Wow. So if she makes a spell attack at a four range, which is tremendous, um, she can really, really do some nasty damage plus one more damage. Okay. So the closest unit, not counting terrain, is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So definitely going to be trying to move toward Lorwyn. And she has a four movement, and she's going to move the row first. So one, two, three, and can't complete any more movement because that would be into water, which would take up to five movement. So 
uh, but and then can't move into the ballista either. Um, so that's the full movement that she can do anyway. So then that's done for them. Back to me. Um, I only have two more crystals and I can close this game out, but I'm concerned because I'm going to lose a lot of points if I don't get more kills. I must get kills because no matter what, if I close the game out right now, I'm going to lose. Um, so Leothar, I can do this for sure. I'm going to move here for one and then attack. And I don't weaken because I only have two units left. Um, I do four damage. Umog only has two health. Umog is out of the game. Yes. And no counterattack. That's really nice. Um, there we go. And then I move this up. So that's pretty sweet. And I got this. If you capture an enemy, immediately perform any action, even if the unit is weakened. Um, but so I will definitely use that now. And it's still here just for that sake. So for my free action, I can move three with Leothar. I'm going to go into this cave for one, this portal, to here. And then I'm going to go inside here. And I start on this side. So this was my second action, third action to there. Okay. And I'm in this long corridor of a dungeon. And that is all my actions. Um, no, because he moved, attacked. Then I got a free move. So I actually still have one more. So Lorwyn... Lorwyn has got to get some stuff done over here. Um, hmm. But what I would like to do is with Lorwyn move up here and start messing around, but I went into this dungeon, which means it's no longer eligible. The portals on it are no longer eligible while the dungeon is out of play here. Um, and I can't really do it in a different order because Lailathar already took two actions. So in order to get, so like if I give, because I had that free action and I had to use it right then. If I gave that free action to Lorwyn, Lorwyn could get up there, but then Leolithar would have stayed behind. But then Lorwyn could have taken a normal action and done an attack. You know what? I'm going to not go into this dungeon quite yet. I've, in, it, I've, I've rethought my actions, and no other players are here to tell me that I'm cheating, and I don't feel like I'm cheating, so I'm going to... Take that back. I didn't do too much. I didn't like roll any dice or anything. Um, so the free action that I got from my tactic card is going to go to Lorwyn, in which Lorwyn's at a cave entrance, a portal. So one, two here. She can move three. So two, th three. One, two, three, four. Yes. Yes, this is good. I'm going to move right there. Lorwyn has a pretty sweet ability where all targets within her four range, which covers both um, silver and clotho, take zero damage plus whatever I roll. So I'm going to attempt to roll all three, so that'll cost me four mana. Oh, give me a good roll. Please give me a good roll. That, I mean, at least I did some damage, but it's not, it's not enough. Um, okay, so silver takes... Two damage because silver's in the water. And Clotho needs a hit point uh, tracker. And Clotho takes two damage. Now, because it is a area effect attack that does not have a primary target, there's no counterattack. So that's one of the added benefits of somebody like Lorwyn. But, I mean, you see the risk. If she does zero damage, if I didn't roll this, she wouldn't have done any damage at all. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, but with them both being in the water, that was pretty helpful, actually. Silver is getting pretty low in health. Okay, that's mine now. That was everything. That was I feel like that was a lot better than going into that dungeon right now. Um, so new tactic card. If Okay, so you melee attack. Okay, so it, this is risk at all. If I melee attack somebody and the unit that does it has four or less health, I deal an extra damage and it cannot be countered. I'm going to hold on to that. I think 
that will come in handy. Because I've been taking a lot of damage this game. Um, all right, so now the enemy. It's the wizard, already moved. So we're going to go to the leftmost unit that's not moved, which is Lord Theodolf. This one has ranged attacks at plus two damage. That's good for me, because Theodolf doesn't have a ranged attack. Um, nearest unit is definitely Lorwyn. Theodolf has a pretty impressive movement of six. The compass tells me you'll move the row first. So one, two, three, four, five. Can definitely get to me. During the melee attack, if other units are within three spaces, they take a damage, but nobody, uh, no, if other enemy units to Lord Theodolf. That's not the case. So he'll make a normal attack on Lorwyn for four damage. One, two, three, four. And a potential to knock back, uh, which happens. It knocks me back two, but it doesn't matter. I just hit the wall, which deals me one more damage. So I'm down to two health. But I can now counterattack. And if I do it with a melee, I will do extra damage. And I can't be countered. So I kind of lose that benefit. But two damage guaranteed is a lot better than rolling two dice. Because the max that would do is two anyway. So I may as well do this because I'll get the extra damage. So I'm going to counterattack with a melee. It's going to do the two damage plus the one damage from this tactic card. So Theodolf will take three damage down to three, which is pretty good. These guys are getting pretty weak up here. Um, and, and that is that. So, okay. All right, so it's my turn now. And I think, I, I mean, I could... He's got three hit points, so I actually cannot quite kill Theodolf. But if I did a another spell, I hit all of them. Um, and silver is at three health, which means I'd and I, but I can I only have three mana, which means I could only roll two dice. And to do three damage, I'd have to roll both of them as. Uh, they'd have to both be successful. That I just think that that's too, I think that's too steep. Um, dang. But actually, I can still kind of, I can still kind of do both um, in terms of of getting. So I'm gonna uh, getting some health back. I'm gonna go one, two, three up into here. That's her full movement. But she refills her mana, which is going to help with the attack, and gains four health up to six. It does block. Lailathar's plans of going in the dungeon because you have to have the box cleared, but that's okay. Because um, this was really important to keep her alive. So she's going to make an attack. It's four range. But she's up top, so it's actually five range. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, so she can hit everybody. So this is going to be good. Here we go. I just got to roll really nice right now. So I'm going to spend uh, four mana to do a full attack. Oh, if I can roll two of the three as successful attacks, Silver is dead. If I roll all three, Silver and Lord Theodolf is dead. Could you imagine? <gasps> oh, I didn't roll any. Oh, sad, sad day. Dang it. That's really... Oh, that's so... That's so disheartening. Okay. Oh, man. Um, that's it. That's it for me. Um, okay, so I draw a tactic card, realize your potential... You use if you use the ability of two or more allies in a single turn, immediately restore four mana and ammo to those allies. That's not bad actually. If I can get Lailathar's ability to to proc. Okay. Um actually. Ah, ah I should have thought that through. I should not have done the attack with Lorwyn. I should have just moved her into there for safety. And then moved Lailathar through the portal, came through, and killed Silver. Because he does four damage. But I only have one action left. Wow. Wow. And I don't feel right about taking that one back. I rolled dice. You know, I I, I did all that jazz. Actually, um, I shouldn't have drawn this quite yet because my turn wasn't over. So I'll, I'm going to keep it, though. But I'm not going to... It's not in play right now. And Lailathar is going to take a move. Because he's got some health. He can he can sustain a little bit. Uh, he's going to move one, two, three. 
Actually, I'm going to move... No, I'm going to move to three. I, I was considering just staying by silver because if silver goes next, silver would check first for a melee attack instead of a range attack, but in actuality, silver has a better... has does more melee damage even than range, so whatever. So I'm going to move over to Theodolf. I'm kind of hoping that Lord Theodolf attacks me. This is now in, back into play. Um, so that I can do a counterattack and kill Lord Theodolf. All right, so these all need to get shuffled back in because everybody had taken an action. If I draw a fighter card right now for the enemy, they will spawn a fighter back into play. Hmm. But see, both of these units have ranged attacks, and Lelathar is within range, actually, of Silver. So, so, but not in range of Clotho. So actually, I could kill... Nope, I can't. It wouldn't kill Silver. It would just do two damage, and Silver has three hit points. I'm really hoping that I, I draw for Lord Theodolf. But I did not. I, I drew for the, the one I certainly did not want to draw for. Um, Clotho. Uh, missile attacks do plus two damage. She's going to do a spell attack, not a missile attack. She is within range, so she's not even going to move. She's just going to straight attack. Target takes two damage, plus two damage per uh, symbol rolled. Oh, man, so four damage. Wow. Holy smokes. Four damage to Lelathar. And Lelathar is not in range for a counterattack. Okay, my turn. I really need to... Get something done here and i think i can actually i i really feel confident because leothar's ability if he does a melee attack allies within three gain a hit point so that would heal lorwin procking his ability and then lorwin attacks with her ability and that would trigger this tactic card so that's pretty handy um and i don't have to move leothar to kill theodolf so he's just going to do that four damage to theodolf theodolf is gone there's one more kill for the good guys and um, no counterattack. It does proc his ability, so Lorwyn heals a hit point. And now Lorwyn will make an attack. Um, okay, so, but she can only roll two dice, so it's gonna cost one for casting the spell, two for the dice. So I'll set this one aside. Ah, no damage again. You gotta be kidding me. Um, that's sad. But, I mean, technically she still used her ability, even though it didn't work. She still did use it. Um, so that's going to trigger this tactic card. Immediately restore four ammo and four mana to two allies, the ones that did it. So and he's at full anyway, so that's irrelevant. But she gains this mana back, which is nice. I mean, she's not a village, but she can't... Because she's starting her turn on the village, she can't use the village right away. But I can move. Um, I mean, I say I could have moved and done the melee actually, and that would have killed Silver. Man, I just feel like I'm not thinking this through. But I, I it was so, I was so focused on using her ability to use that tactic card that I didn't actually take the best action available to myself. Oh, that's that breaks my heart. But she's gonna flee one, two, three into this cave, get out of here. So now she's in the corridor. She's used her max movement, so she'll just park right there. And that's all three movements for me. So my tactic card is now, you, uh, if you weaken an ally this turn and you've already weakened another ally, then you immediately remove weaken. Um, it's good uh, most of the game, but since I only have two units, I'm not weakening anybody, so it's not going to help um, right now. But it is now the enemy, and, they, and they're very likely to just spawn a new enemy right now, actually. Um, Rogue, no, okay. That's, all right, so the Rogue's gonna make, ah, uh, Leothar's dead. Um, two damage, range shot, plus three from the ability. She just stays right, Silver stays right where uh, he's at and and kills Leothar. Oh, okay. One more for the bad guys. Leothar's gone. I really need to use my tactic card to bring somebody back. This is really not good for me. Um, now it's my turn. Lorwyn can move three. 
So one, two, onto a trap. Okay, so when you enter this space, roll the three dice for each arrow icon. You roll, take a damage. Yay, no damage. Um, so one, two, three. So using full movement to there. But because I'm down to one unit, I can actually take all three movements. I can, I can take all three actions with the unit, and I can take the same actions multiple times. It's normally not the rule. But it's last man standing when you're down to one. So I'm going to move again, one, into here. And this one is the rock slide, the cave-in. And I have to roll a knockback. I have to roll one knockback at least to be able to get through this. Otherwise, I lose movement. All right, so I got through it. Um, so two, three. Now I'm fighting this enemy, which is... Uh, the troll again, I, I certainly don't have four melee attacks, so I'm going to take a damage. And then I still have more, I can still take one more action, three more movement. So one, and I complete this. And I come out at one of those entrances, and I'm going to choose... Uh, because I can't attack, because this is my third action, so I'm going to kind of run away. So... So that's one, two, three, because I cannot afford to die. And that actually gets her really close to a starting point, so I can use my start anew. Um, and I got the Crystal of Might. You may select any unit to perform an attack or cast a spell. Uh, okay, so instead, because I, I should have just read this when I got it, I'm going to come out right here and stay there and use this to perform an attack. Her melee attack does two damage, uh, but Silver's in the water, so Silver's gonna take one extra damage. That's enough to kill Silver. Yes! Yes, I'm making a comeback. So Silver's gone, and now it's just me down uh, to Clotho here, and then it is their attack now. Um, but I get to draw a tactic card. Reach the summit. You. Uh, if you move an ally into a peak's space, immediately perform a free move with another ally. I wish I had another ally. Um, okay, so now it's them. Beast. So now they are spawning a new beast. Uh-oh. I really hope that this beast does not spawn on the bridge control space because I want to get them off of there. If I, so I'm getting pretty close. If I kill three more units, or if I can get into that large cave and clear it out, I can win this game. I think I have enough points now. I've taken enough points from them. I'm close enough to not lose a lot of points on the kill tracker. I, can, I, I have hope if I can get this done. They get uh, Kakaza. He's really nasty. Um, his really, really nasty attack. Okay, but I need the control tokens to determine where he goes. Please, somewhere far away, like maybe the castle or something. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. I have the worst luck ever. So he goes right here. That's really bad. And then he's going to make his actions. Um, he can't melee attack me. He doesn't have a range. Gonna move four. Gonna go uh, call him first. One, two, three to here. The special ability is plus two attack. He does six damage. Lorwyn has six hit points. Wow. That's it for me. Lorwyn couldn't make it to, even if she just made it to that starting spot, I could have brought another hero on, on, back into my side. So this goes right here. So that's the end of the game. And I lose. Oh, I felt like I was so close. I was getting some hope there at the end. Um, all right. Well, that's the end. But I mean, for, you know, just for the sake of it, let's see. Kind of where the points were. I mean, regardless of loss, but let's just count up the points. So these are the enemy kills. They get three per kill. So three, six, nine, twelve. Um, and they have this still in play, so that's fourteen. I got two for each, so that's eight. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, but I lose two points because I didn't quite get out of the negative zone on the kill tracker. So that brings me down to 11. 
they have surviving units. Those are two each actually. So they, so 18 to 11. Oh man, I was so close. All right, um, there you are. Now I mentioned to play again because I got to win. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for watching everybody. Um, hope you enjoyed it. That's uh, you know one run through of, of solo play. Um, all right, I will see you guys on the comment boards and talk to you later. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.